Hey there, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, I'm just going to talk through cooking the two big options, which in my opinion are electric or propane. Um, you know, there's pros and cons of each. I've kind of used propane for the longest time. And after three or four years of doing that, I'm actually kind of leaning towards switching to electric. So I'm going to kind of give you my thoughts on it. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I'm thinking that way. And, you know, this may be a controversial topic. I'm not sure, but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know if you think I'm totally wrong. Let me know what your thoughts are, your opinions. Um, I'd love to hear from you. But so without further ado, let's dive into propane versus electric cooking. All Things Overlanding is brought to you by some fantastic companies. You should definitely check out the description and click through their links to see all the awesome stuff they offer. Companies like Red Arc for all your overlanding power management needs. Last US Bag, tons of amazing quality overlanding bags. Rugged Bound Supply Company, rooftop tents, awnings, roof racks, and more. The Moore Expo 2022, get your tickets below. And Northology Overland, guided overlanding trips and a free overlanding magazine. All right, guys. So as I mentioned today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about options for cooking. Um, for the last like few years, every time I've gone, I've taken a typically in the past a one pound propane tank, several of them, right? Because those don't last very long. So you've got to use one up. They're kind of disposable. You can kind of refill them. People have mixed emotions and feelings about that, right? Some people feel like they're meant for one time use. You're not supposed to refill them. It's not safe. I've refilled them a few times. I've never had problems. I have had some where they will kind of lose that the valve will get loose on them and they'll start to leak. Um, in that case, obviously you got to get rid of them. It's not safe. Um, but so the, you know, the one pound tanks are really inefficient. They're also really cost prohibitive. Like I think most of the time at like a Walmart or something for a three pack, it's, it's been a while since I bought one pounders cause I have a five pound now but somewhere in the ballpark of like seven to 10 bucks or something like that, maybe more now, um, for like a three pack of one pound tanks. Um, you know, a 20 pound tank, if you've got a tank already, you can take it to your local grocery store or gas station, fill it up for 20, 25 bucks, somewhere in that ballpark. So it's much more cost effective, but then that 20 pound tank is huge, right? Like it's a big tank. Um, but so on the, the topic of size of propane, you know, I'm a proponent of a five pound tank because it gets rid of all the single use individual pound ones. It's much less expensive to fill up than, you know, buying a bunch of the single pound ones. And it's small enough to warrant taking it on a trip versus a 20 pound tank. One pro is that you've got some flexibility there, right? And when your propane setup, you've got some flexibility depending on you know, what size you want to carry. If, if you don't cook that much, you're not running any sort of a propane fire pit, then a couple one pound tanks might be good for you. You might be able to get two or three or four or five trips out of that, right? Um, and then just every once in a while, buy a new one pound or a couple one pound tanks and have some backups. Um, so if that works, then that could be a pro for you, right? Another pro of propane is that it's been used forever, right? Like it's, it, there's a reason why most people cook with propane. It is easy to control the heat. It's easy to um, dispense. It's readily available. You can get it at almost any gas station, any grocery store, that kind of thing. Um, so if you have a propane grill or scottle or whatever you have that you're cooking on, uh, you have availability of propane if you need to find somewhere to get it. Now, if you're in the middle of nowhere, obviously you don't have that. And I'll touch on why electric beats that out here later on in the episode. Um, another thing, aside from the one pound tanks, it's pretty inexpensive, right? So again, my five pound tank cost me like three or four bucks to fill up last time at a U-Haul. A 20 pound tank for 20 pounds of propane is about 20, 25 bucks somewhere in that ballpark. So again, it's fairly cost effective, but you do need to keep your eye on it. You need to make sure that it's topped off before you go on a trip. So there is some management you have to do there um, that's a little bit above and beyond because you can't just like, like electric, you can't just plug it in at your house. You have to take it to a place and either buy more or refill it. Um, but it is inexpensive. It is pretty easy to get. Um, another thing about propane is that it's a little bit less complex, right? It's not like with electric where you're having to deal with, you know, inverters or, you know, any of that sort of the craziness that comes with electric stuff. Um, it's just simple plug and play, right? You may need an adapter if you're, you know, running from a 20 pound tank to like a, a stove, but most of those are available for like 20 to 30 bucks on Amazon for like an adapter hose that you can connect a 20 pound tank to that. I'll put a link in the description of the one that I've used before um, if you're looking for something like that. But so it is a little bit less complex um, unless you have a problem, right? If you have a leak or something like that or your, your regulator goes bad, you got to go get a new regulator. All of a sudden you don't even have a stove. You can't use it anymore. Um, so, you know, overall, though, it's a little bit less complex to run propane. Now, let's talk about some of the cons of propane. So, you know cold for me is a big thing. I'm in the Midwest. I like to go camping from about September, October until like February, March. I'm a winter camper. I like it when no one else is out there. I like having sort of the forest to myself. I like the peace and quiet, um, but it gets cold. 
And, you know, I've heard some people have said, and again, post up in the comments and let me know your opinions on this. I personally have had this experience multiple times over the last few years where if it's so cold, the propane, it condenses, right? And it doesn't want to dispense. Um, or if you have it on for a long time, you'll notice like if you've ever run a heater in your garage while you're working on your vehicle or something, it starts to get condensation on the outside because the, the gas inside the tank is condensing. It's colder than the air around it and then it gets ice on it, which freezes it up, and makes it condense further. And then you have problems dispensing the propane, right? Um, so like I've personally recently in the last few months, we did some engine work on my frontier and it was freezing cold, you know, 20s, 30s below that, sometimes in the, the teens. And we had a big 20 pound tank sitting there and we had a propane heater running off of it. And after an hour or two, that thing would just start to like freeze up and it would just shut off. It would just die because it couldn't dispense propane enough to keep the flame going. Um, I've been camping in like negative temperature weathers, you know, zero single degree, single digit temperatures before. And it just almost is almost impossible to get a flame going on that propane. So again, there are different strategies for that. You can keep it wrapped up, you can keep it insulated, you keep it in your tent where it's warm with you. There's, there's options, right? If you're a little bit smarter about it, but I just am kind of tired of dealing with that, right? Like I have it strapped to the back of my truck where I just want to kind of keep it. I want it to be there permanently. So I always have it right. So that I can just hop in the truck and go. But then if I get to camp and I can't cook, that could really ruin your plans, right? I always, I, as a result of having that happen to me multiple times, I always bring backups. I bring like cold lunchable type meals or like, you know, things that I can eat that I don't have to heat up just in case, but it's not ideal, right? Um, so that's another con is, you know, the difficulty in the cold for me is a problem. Now, if you live in a warmer climate, if you never go in the winter, you don't like winter camping, you're not gonna have a problem from a temperature standpoint with the propane. Um, as I already kind of mentioned, it's a little bit harder to refill. It's not like, a, say, a big portable power bank where you can just plug it into your wall, right? Like you have to take it to a place and have them refilled or swap it out for another tank. Um, or you have to go, if you're using one pounders, you have to go and, and buy new one pounders. Or you could get one of the adapters. I'll put a link to this in the description below as well. Turn your 20 pound tank upside down and you can refill those one pounders with this adapter thing. Um, but again, people are sketched out by that. Some people have problems with it. I've done it a few times. I've not had any problems aside from like leaky valves where I've eventually just gotten rid of them. Um, but I've been able to reuse them several times at least and, and get a little bit more use out of the, the one pounders, but it is a little bit harder to refill on your own. You can't just plug it in. Um, it does require a little bit of extra planning too, right? Like you have to, again, I recently, I went on a trip to Kentucky and right before I left, I looked at my gauge on my, my propane tank, my five pound propane tank. And it was like showing like in the yellow. So like a third of the way down or like a third of the way from empty. And I was like, hmm, I've only got a third of a tank. Is this going to be enough to cook for two days, right? Like, I just don't know. But then I'm like, do I, U-Haul for me is like 20 minutes away. So I'm like, do I spend 40 minutes round trip plus the time that I'm at U-Haul? Do I have an hour between now and this weekend when I'm going on this trip to get over there, wait in line forever for someone to come out and service the thing and, and pump the propane for me? It's it's a hassle, right? So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to chance it. And I just went and then it was cold and I decided I just didn't even want to mess with it. And I never even ended up using it. I didn't even cook because it was just such a pain, right? Setting everything up, plugging in the hose, running it to the thing, plugging it in, getting the regulator, plugging that in. There's just a lot of setup that has to happen for that. Um, and I know that sounds super lazy and I'm sounding really glampy now, but on that trip, I was exhausted. We hit the trails all day long. We drove a bunch of the day. We left at like six in the morning. We were on trails till like six at night. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just not going to mess with it. I'm just going to eat a Lunchable or something for dinner, right? Um, or stop at a fast food restaurant on my way back to camp and grab something and then eat that on the way. So, and then that brings us to the last con of propane, which is the more setup, right? So again, it, not, this is going to sound super first world problems, but like, you got to get your grill out. So like I have a truck now and my SUV, I had a slide out. I could just slide my, my grill out. And then you have to plug a regulator in, which the regulator is kind of a pain. Sometimes it's, it gets misthreaded or you just got to be careful. You got to get your regulator plugged in. Then you got to get your adapter hose. You got to plug that into your five pound tank. You got to run it down, plug it into the regulator. You got to get a lighter. You got to start the propane. You got to start it. You got to let it heat up a little bit and then you can cook, right? So that's, Again, it sounds really, really first world problems. I get it. It's not that bad. I don't want to make it sound like propane is a huge pain in the butt, but it is definitely more steps, more work. You've got to, you know, I've, I've left home without my regulator before, gotten all the way out to camp and realized, shoot, I had that in a box or something and I didn't get it into my drawer and now I can't cook anything because I don't have a regulator versus as long as you have your, let's say, electric option with a plug and something to plug it into, you can use it. 
All right, so now let's dive into electric, and I'm gonna kind of talk about the pros and cons of that, but then I'm also gonna talk about why I'm leaning this direction, right? So I've already kind of gone through pros and cons of propane. You can probably tell from the way that I'm describing this stuff, right, that I've had some pain, some growing pains with uh, propane. So with electric, you know, I am, it, it depends on your setup, right? So let me start by saying this. I think propane is perfect for like weekend warriors, right? That's how I've been historically. I still view myself very much as a weekend warrior, but I'm trying to go more and more. I've got this dedicated frontier, you know, rig that is for the more gnarly trips. I want to go on longer and longer trips. I'm really trying to get out on at least two or three week long ish trips a year now. Um, so that being said, I'm putting in a dual battery setup. I've got Red Arc stuff controlling all the electronics management. So I've got, and then I've got that teamed with a hundred watt solar panel. So I've got in essence, essentially unlimited power between the alternator and driving all day and hitting trails and then solar charging up the batteries as well to where like for me, one, I'm already going to have all that electric stuff anyways, because I want to run electric blankets. I want to run heaters. I want to recharge all my stuff. I want to have lights. I've got I, my com, my, my setup is getting super complex because of the nature of the trips that I want to take with the Frontier. Now, you know, I mentioned I'm getting a Maverick too. The Maverick will be much simpler. The Maverick is going to essentially be like propane all the way. It'll be more of like a weekend warrior light trails type truck. I will go out with like a tent or some sort of like a swag tent or something like that, maybe a hammock. And just very like almost more like a backpack camping with a truck. But with the Frontier, in that case, because I'm going more hardcore, more like gnarly trails where I want to get out away from everything, I don't want to have to get, you know, three days into a trip and be like, oh shoot, I used more propane than I thought I would. Now I can't cook, right? So for me, having the rechargeability of solar, having the, the ability to charge off the alternator all day, that stuff for me means that electric makes a little bit more sense. So before I dive into the electric pros and cons, I just wanted to point out, it depends on your setup and it depends on your type of trips, right? So again, do not use this as like a blanket template where you, sh you say, I should never use propane because Fletch said use electric, okay? Just, I'm just telling you, that's not what I'm saying. So I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of electric here and that's gonna kind of illuminate a little bit more around why I'm going that way. But again, the setup is what depends, the setup is what determines whether electric or propane makes more sense. Cool, all right, let's go. Electric. So pros of electric, easy setup, right? Like my current electric setup, before I get all my Red Arc stuff installed, my dual battery and everything, is I've got a thousand watt hour Ocmo power bank. And I'll put a link to, the, to that in the description as well below. But that thing has just a ton of capacity. So like I've run, I need to really test my kick-ass 12 volt travel oven. That thing is gonna be the test to see how much power that draws. But I think I should at least be able to use it a few times off that thousand watt hour battery on a trip to cook like biscuits or cookies or pizza. You know what I mean? Like you can cook crazy stuff with that. Um, and all you have to do, right, is turn on the power bank and plug in the oven and hit start, right? And it's 12 volts, so it's more efficient than AC, having to convert it via AC. But those portable generators also have the ability to do that automatically built into it. You just plug in an AC plug, hit go, and it'll start up and go. So I've got a little tiny, uh, like a single egg, single pancake electric thing that uh, Buddy Brian brought up, sent me a message about, it was like 10 bucks. Again, I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description, but it's like a little nine or $10 like griddle. And you know, my plan with that is I'll just plug that into the AC, boom, break an egg on it and close it up and make an egg, pancake. Drop a pancake in there, boom, close the griddle. You're making pancakes, right? Um, it's easier to control the heat because it's electric, so you just set it to whatever you want it to be at, right? High, low, medium, there's no like having to mess with, like on my Coleman grill, the propane is kind of hard to control and regulate. Now, if you have a nicer grill, that's less of a, a problem, like a Jetboil Genesis or something like that. Um, but on that Coleman grill, it's almost like an on-off switch. It's just you got flame or you got no flame, right? So with the electric, I can actually set temperatures. Most of them have timers built into them. So like, you know, it's it just makes cooking a little bit easier. It makes what you need to bring a little bit easier. And, and relatively, they're pretty small products too, right? Like my stove is like, my stove is like 22 inches long and like five inches tall and like 17 inches deep or something. Um, it's just huge. It takes up like most of one of my drawers in my deck system. Whereas like my little electric griddle is like, the size of a peanut butter sandwich and maybe like twice as thick, right? So I mean, it's it's much smaller. And then even that big travel oven that you can literally cook like pizzas and pies and, and brownies and stuff in, it's much smaller. Um, 
But so like, it's just, it's easier. You pop them out, you plug them in, you're cooking versus having to get a regulator and a hose and a propane tank and keeping it topped off and everything. And again, as long as you're smart about it, if you're eventually when I'm running it off my dual battery, I will just literally plug it into like a 12 volt port in the bed of my truck that runs off all the, the dual battery setup off my house battery and the solar will keep it topped off. The controller will do all the hard work and keep everything charged. And I can just not have to worry about whether I propane or not, right? I can just plug stuff in, use it. If it gets to a warning point where it gets too low, then the system will tell me and it'll shut it off. So again, more complexity, right? That's kind of a con, more complexity in like of the way that you have to wire it and the stuff that you need for it to work. But once everything's set up, if you've got that electrical system in place, then electric is just so much easier to cook on. So again, while adding overall complexity to my build, from a cooking standpoint, just electric versus propane, the electric for me will be much easier to use. But again, if you're not gonna do dual battery, if you're not gonna do all that stuff, you don't wanna mess with lugging around a big heavy portable power bank, propane may be better, right? Um, so more pros on electric, you know, as I've kind of mentioned already, more easily recharged. If I'm in the middle of the woods, I can't go somewhere and get more propane. I can't go somewhere and refill propane, but I've got solar running on the roof of my rig all the time, topping off my batteries. When we're hitting trails during the day, I upgraded my alternator to 130 amp. It's pumping power into those batteries and charging those up as well. Um, so it's just much easier to be further off grid and longer off grid with electric than it is with propane. With propane, you have to bring more propane, right? Like that's the answer is if you know you're gonna be gone for a week or two weeks or something like that, you just gotta bring a few 20 pound tanks and that's a lot of storage and stuff that you have to store and keep and mess with and swap them out. You know, that's just, in the long term, that's not gonna be great for me. So I'm, I'm leaning towards electric for that reason. Um, and then expandable, right? So again, I've got my dual battery set up, but let's say that I go on a couple of these week long trips and I find that my draw is so great that even with the alternator and the solar charging all day, I can't keep up, right? I can't keep it topped off. I can very easily take that Ocmo 1000 watt hour portable generator with me and throw it in the back of the truck and strap it down and have that as a backup. So then it's expandable, right? It's easy, more easily expandable. Um, you know, it's the same as propane, right? I would say they're probably about equal, right? Like you can bring more propane tanks too. Propane's a little bit sketchier to, to haul. It's a little bit bigger. Like a 20 pound tank is probably twice as big as, you know, you probably take two Ocmo 1000 watt hour battery packs and stack them on top of each other. And that's about the size of a 20 pound tank. Um, so, you know, I would argue that the electric's a little bit smaller to store too. Um, but so it is expandable, a little bit more expandable in my opinion than propane. Now cons. Um, the cons of electric, especially if you're using AC, is that it's power hungry, right? So like versus charging up a phone or charging up your watch or an iPad or even a laptop or something like that, when you're running AC power to cook, it's a lot of energy. It's going to draw a lot of power um, because of that. So yeah, so you wanna make sure that, you know, again, that you have the capacity of power storage to run those devices. Sometimes they have spikes too. So like an electric griddle or something like that might pull 50, 60 plus watts um, from the power bank. And sometimes some of those, especially those cheaper power banks can't handle it and they just shut off. So you've gotta watch that too. I've had that happen with an electric blanket before where like I'll turn it on and I'll go to sleep and like an hour later I wake up and I'm freezing and like the whole thing shut off. And it's because it must have spiked and it just shut off. It said, whoop, can't do that much. And it just kicked the breaker off and shut off the, the power bank. So you have to be aware of that too. Another thing is like propane is flame, right? So like you can put a pot on top of flame and it heats up really quick because it's literally a fire, right? Whereas with electrical, you've got, you know, elements inside of there that have to heat that up. So sometimes it can be a little bit slower. So, you know, if you want to get to camp and like cook some soup or some chili or something really quick, propane's probably going to be a little quicker. Whereas electric is going to take longer, right? Because it's just going to take longer to heat up and cook that food. Um, so that's one of the cons too, is it can take a little bit longer. So again, that was pros and cons for electric. So now that you've kind of heard both of those, you know, obviously these are my opinions, right? I'm not an electrician. I'm not a... I'm not, uh, what's his name from, I'm not a propane salesman, right? So like, you know, I'd love to hear your, your comments down in the, in the comments below. Let me know what you think, if, if you agree or disagree. Um, but again, I think that they're, I think that they're just interesting options for different setups, right? Again, on my like more light weekend warrior type build, I will probably just take propane. I'll take my simple little stove, my regulator and a little one pound propane tank and just call it a day. That's it. And that will go in my Maverick. And then I think on my, like my longer hardcore trips, those will be electric, right? I'll have my nice stove, I'll have my, or my nice oven, I'll have my little griddle, 
and I'll just take that stuff and run it off my dual battery setup. And in that situation, I think that makes perfect sense. So think about your kind of your use cases, think about the pros and cons of each, and then I hope that that helps you kind of make a decision as far as which you think is best for you and your trips. Um, so again, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that you learned something. Um, you know, my goal with this is not to be a smart aleck or to be an expert or anything like that, but just to give you my experience that I've had over the last few years as I've done this. Again, I'm no expert, but I enjoy talking about this stuff. I like learning about it. I feel like I've learned a lot that hopefully will help, especially if you're newer to overlanding, help you save time and money. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Um, if you're not already, down in the description below are links to Facebook, Instagram. We've got a Patreon page that's pretty awesome. We're starting to try and grow. If I hit 25 Patreon subscribers, I'm going to start setting up some like Patreon uh subscriber trips. So I'm going to try and set up some trips with you guys to, to get out and hit some, some trails and stuff with the Patreon folks. So definitely check that out. And then of course the podcast, um, and there's a newbie overlanders group. There's a link down there to a Facebook group on Facebook, um, where a bunch of newbies and experienced folks are getting together and we're talking about exactly these kind of questions, right? What's the best comm setup? What's the best propane versus electric cooking setup. How do you do dual batteries, that kind of stuff. So definitely check that out as well. Um, and if you're not a subscriber on all those other channels, I'd love to have you. Same with the YouTube channel. Click that subscribe button, click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. I do one of these every week, like a podcast slash vlog, talking about general overlanding type stuff. And then I also do like a gear review or a do it yourself mod or things like that. Vehicle mods, that kind of thing. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Click the like button if it was, leave a comment down below and uh, we'll see you guys next week.